Hi, I'm Pete Cater. Welcome to part two of our four-part introduction to big band drumming. It was Duke Ellington that said, it don't mean a thing if it ain't got that swing. And the key responsibility of the drummer in the big band rhythm section is to create that all-important feeling of swing. Solid time, but with a forward motion and a good energetic feeling of driving. First of all, let's look at the basic jazz ride beat, which I'm sure you're all familiar with. So we've got four beats in the bar on the ride cymbal with the skip note on the and of two and the and of four. It's that what we've referred to as that swung eighth feel. For me, the essence of that swinging feeling is all about the relationship between the ride cymbal and the stepped two and four in the hi-hat. One of the main challenges is getting that swinging ride pattern to sound good on the hi-hat. common problem is, with young drummers I find particularly, is using too much pressure on the pedal. Keeping the motion as economical as possible, I just use a kind of a rocking motion. Even when the cymbals are closed, they should still resonate, there should still be some length in the note. We've established our basic swing feel on either the ride cymbal or the hi-hat. Now let's look at what we're going to do with the bass drum and the left hand. I like to use a technique that's usually referred to as feathering, whereby I'm playing a very light quarter note pulse in the bass drum. Like this. One, two, oh one. Now that bass drum note needs to be really, really subtle and really way back in the mix. It doesn't want to be like this. That's just going to sound terrible. And if you're playing a really rather more contemporary sounding chart, you might want to leave the bass drum out altogether and just use it to punctuate, to support figures and to uh, support the soloists as well, more like this. That just leaves us with the left hand. So what we're going to do with the left hand in the rhythm section, we're going to use it to support the ride pad. And in order to do that, you're going to need a pretty good command of independence. And what I get my students to do is to take each of the swung eighth notes in a single bar of 4-4 four, four time and get familiar with them, each in turn. I'll just show you what I mean by that. One, two, one.
and so on. So there's one and, two and, three and, four and. The next step is to do groups of two. And that should feel, it doesn't want to be too, it doesn't want to be stiff. It really needs to flow. It should be kind of almost like a double stroke motion in the left hand. So let's start on one and, and I'm going to cycle the group of two all the way through a single bar of four, four time. One, two, one, two, three. Once you've practiced those two fundamental exercises, which you'll see in the magazine, then the thing to do then is just to set up the ride and start improvising one and two note groups with the left hand. And do it at a slow tempo, so you can actually think about where you're going to be placing these left hand parts. So let's take the tempo down, let's just improvise one, two, maybe the occasional group of three if I'm feeling ambitious with the left hand. One. Two, one, two. Let's try that a little faster now. One, two, one, two. Now, if you want to develop this left hand independence, I strongly recommend that you get yourself a copy of Jim Chapin's classic book, Advanced Techniques for the Modern Drummer. And that starts off with all the swung eighth notes in the left hand, I think it's the first exercise, like this. Then he looks at various permutations of groups of three. One, two. One, two, three. One, two, one, two, three. One, two, one, two, three. I particularly like that last one where you're actually doubling the ride pattern with the left hand. That can be really, really compelling and really driving, can create a great energy in the ensemble. But remember, don't overplay the left hand dynamic. I like to think of the two hands and the two feet as being like four faders on a mixing desk. And I'm very conscious all the time of keeping the relative balance of the ride, the snare, the left foot hi-hat and the bass drum, all where the music wants them to be. Okay, we've talked a little bit about the left hand, and now we're going to integrate it with the bass drum. When you're playing either with a full ensemble or behind a soloist, it's nice to get a kind of conversational thing happening between the left hand and the right foot. Here's the kind of thing that I mean. Now you're going to need that same kind of technique next time when we start talking about catching horn figures with the rest of the band. So, see you then.